right, so our next step here is we want to be able to update our Raspberry Pi to have Scratch 3.0. Uh, what you're going to find is when we go up to the Raspberry on here and we go to programming, we're going to see lots of options. We're going to, we're going to break these down later. But the most common programming language, especially for elementary kids and, and middle school, is Scratch. Um, we got Scratch 2.0. But as we know, Scratch 3.0 is out, and so kids are going to get frustrated if they don't see the blocks that they're used to if you're using Scratch 3.0 in your classroom or in whatever your learning environment might be. So we want to make sure we have Scratch 3.0. It just helps with consistency. It just helps make sure that everything we're doing flows. So when you're not using a Raspberry Pi and you're back on your regular devices and you're using Scratch 3.0 among platforms, everything just makes sense. And so what we can do is we can get this installed. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to preferences and we've been here before but this time we're going to look at this option here called recommended software and it's going to take a minute to update all the different things and you're going to see a whole list of software that they recommend now those that have check marks next to them those are ones that are already installed on your raspberry pi most of them maybe you don't even know what they mean or use what they're used for and that's fine but those without a check are ones that you want to want to maybe consider installing at some point when you're ready. Just know that there is so much that we can do to a Pi, Raspberry Pi. Remember, a Raspberry Pi is a operating system. It, it's a computer, so the, the possibilities are, are truly pretty endless. So as we scroll down, we see there's Scratch 3.0. We see Scratch is installed, Scratch version 2 is installed, but we want Scratch version 3. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to install Scratch 3.0, and that's going to give us this common platform, and it's going to lead us to our first activity of some physical computing, a very small amount of physical computing. We're going to learn how to use Scratch to make an LED light up. So it's going to download here. Once it's downloaded, I'll show you what it looks like, and then we can move on. And So this is just a, a way to help you see how to install some recommended software, um, once you get more advanced and into the intermediate levels, there's so much that you can do. Um, this is going to be very helpful, not just what they recommend, but other programming software uh, applications as well. So um, this should be just about done here. There we go. Installation is complete. We hit OK. This is going to close out. And now if I go to my Raspberry and I head to Programming, we should see Scratch 3. And if I click on that you should see the application that you are very familiar with if you're using Scratch 3.0 in your classroom. And if not, definitely something for you to consider, especially if you're trying to infuse some computer science um, into your classroom and your learning. This is a great graphical user interface for MIT to help you get started. So let this load up here and we will rock and roll. One thing to note is, as I've been reading, that they recommend that if you're going to be using Scratch 3.0, that you have the Raspberry Pi, um, the 4 version that has at least 2 gig of RAM. The 1 gig of RAM tends to glitch a little bit, so I can't speak to that personally. I'm just letting you know what I've been reading, because we can see all the blocks and everything we need are right there. All right, my friends, so let's get into the first project of uh, using Scratch to light up an LED. Thank you. 